Have you ever wondered how to create a flashing effect in a game? Maybe you have a bomb in your game that you want to flash red to convey that it is about to detonate. Or maybe you have a ship that has taken damage and you want it to flash red. With Unity's Shader Graph, this is actually pretty easy. Let me show you. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of more content like this, and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Okay, let's get going. I will show you how to create a flashing material using Shader Graph in Unity's Universal Rendering Pipeline. First, we create a new lit URP shader graph. Now there are basically two aspects to this shader. First, we have to have the mechanism that makes the material flash with a certain color. Second, we have to have a way of turning this flashing on or off so that we can only have something flash if it has taken damage, for instance. Let's look at how to achieve the flashing effect first. At the heart of this is the square wave node in shader graph. This node takes in a scalar and emits one if the value after the decimal point of the input is below or equal to 0.5 and emits zero if it is greater than 0.5. This means if we feed it values emitted by a time node, it will go back and forth between emitting 1 and 0. We can now multiply with a color, go to default of red, multiply it, create a texture, feed it into a sample texture 2D, take the output, add it to our flashing color, and let's give this texture a default, and we take the output of this and feed it into the base color. And we basically have a basic flashing shader. Now let's have a look at how to turn the flashing effect on or off. The key node here is the branch node. This node accepts a Boolean predicate and emits one value if the predicate is true and another if it is false. For our purposes, it is sufficient to leave the values for true and false as one and zero respectively. So we have our branch node here. We can now multiply it by the output of the square wave. and take the output of this and feed it into the multiplication of the color. We can now turn off the flashing effect by toggling this value in the predicate on or off. So we turn it off, it's not flashing, and if we turn it on, it is flashing. What we did here is we used the branch node to essentially allow or block the effect of the square wave on the rest of our shader. This is because if we turn off the Boolean predicate of the branch node, the branch node will output zero, which, when multiplied by the square wave, will also always result in zero. Multiplying the zero with the color of our flash will also result in zero, and adding this zero to the color of our texture will have no effect on the color of the sample texture. If we now make sure that the predicate of our branch node is exposed to the material, we can access it from our code and conditionally turn on or off the flashing effect of our material. This is great if you want to make something like a ship start flashing red if it has taken too much damage. And that is how you can create a flashing material in Shader Graph that you can control from code. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.